Alexander Saar has been the definition of a next star. With a brother already in the NBA, Alex's journey has been everything but traditional. The French big man began his basketball career in European youth basketball systems. As a teenager, Saar joined the Overtime Elite program, which has quickly become one of the best developmental hotspots for youth basketball after developing several NBA players like Dominic Barlow and most recently the Thompson Twins. Now, Saar is finally draft eligible for the 2024 NBA Draft. The soon-to-be 19-year-old has put the basketball world on notice with his play for the Perth Wildcats. In his first season playing professional basketball against grown men, Saar's adjustment to the NBL's pace, size, and skill has been seamless. However, midway through the year, Saar went down with a hip injury in a scary fall. After missing a few weeks, the Wildcats' big came back better than ever. On the season, Saar is scoring over 9 points per game in just 17 minutes. The 7'1 big man shoots over 60% on twos and has been extremely productive in other areas on the court as well. His stats per 36 minutes are really what pop off the screen. Flirting with nearly 20 and 10 to go along with 3 blocks per game, Saar's length and lateral fluidity paint him as the potential top pick of the 2024 NBA Draft. Loved by his teammates, embraced by the fans, and flaunted as the potential number one pick by media, Sar's got a bright future ahead of him in the NBA. Welcome everyone back to Utility Sports. Super excited for today's video as we're going to give my first scouting profile here on Alex Saar, the NBL big man playing for the Perth Wildcats this year, standing at seven foot one with a seven foot four wingspan. He is a freakish athletic talent that I think is going to have a really bright NBA career ahead of him. And in this video, I'm going to give my comparison for him as a draft comp. We're also going to talk about where my draft projection for him could be. And of course, the main meat and potatoes of this video is going to be an actual X's and O's breakdown and what are his strengths and weaknesses as a current prospect. What areas of growth do we need to see from him? And what areas of his game are going to translate extremely well into the NBA? Again, I'm super excited for this video. I hope you are as well. If you are, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. The best place to start when talking about Alex Saar is going to be the defensive end of the floor and what does he bring to building a team defense? And I think there's a few things that he specifically stands out from the the rest of the class in when it comes to his defensive presence and what he's going to be able to provide to building a good team defensive identity at the NBA level. So let's take a look at the first wow play or woe play of the season that I saw Alex R make earlier this year, the one that really made me hesitate and say, whoa, what is this? What is going on with this freakishly long, athletic, tall, big man from France who's now playing in Australia? What is going on with this kid? And Alex R, listen, super athletic. During his time at Overtime Elite, that really stood out to me. I've been watching this kid for quite a while now. But I think he's on the cusp of putting it all together in a few different ways. Here he's caught out in isolation, one-on-one, -on -one, hedging toward a screen that doesn't end up coming. And with this, he's already forced to flip his hips one time, but then does it a second time. And this is what really stood out to me. When you have a big man out on an island like this, usually things don't go very well. And at this point, specifically here on this crossover, 99% of big men are beat at this point. You have a smaller guard, a quicker guard moving downhill. Sars off balance and seemingly out of the play here. But with his length, size, shot blocking prowess, he's able to get back into this play. One of the most impressive plays I've seen from any draft prospect this season. It's a whoa, like what is going on here moment uh, with a big who's able to change direction twice the ability to flip his hips. This is what we call functional defensive playmaking. He makes a big time block in really an impressive, uh, in impressive fashion. This next clip, you're gonna see Saar guarding along the baseline in isolation here. And again, you're talking about a seven foot one big man. Think about someone with similar measurements to Rudy Gobert, maybe not quite as tall as Rudy Gobert, but very similar physically to Gobert in terms of the length and the size. And when you're looking at him in this situation, 
First of all, he's squared up to the uh, offensive player right now. And one thing I'm gonna say is not forcing either direction, which is very challenging to do, because right now it's really up to the offensive player which way he wants to go, and Sar's gonna have to react to that. But Sar does a great job. He maintains a high hand here on all of these ball fakes. He does not leave his feet. This is good discipline. Again, for an 18-year-old kid right now playing pro basketball, this is all impressive stuff. And then on the rip through, he takes a bump, and still swats the shot. Let's watch this one again, full speed. I wanna really emphasize when he takes the bump here on the drive right there, able to stay in the play, and he actually leverages that bump to his advantage, fighting for positioning. Again, really good first step movement. He's not beat at this point, even off of a good quick rip through from the offensive player, stays attached to him, and then this is where length wins in the NBA and in basketball all around the world. Sar maximizes his length, and even allowing the offensive player to get where he wanted to go, it doesn't matter with Sar's physicals. A great defensive play here. This is really the name of the game for Alex Sar, who is going to be, in my opinion, the best defensive player in this entire draft class when it's all said and done. Now, there's still a lot of time. Ryan Dunn has, of course, uh, a good argument for that as well. But when we're talking about defensive identity building uh, for an NBA team, the big man position specifically is one of those big spots that you have to have a good one to build an identity. I think Sar is going to be really pivotal at the NBA level. Our next clip here now is Alex Sar defending in the pick and roll. Uh, this is exactly what you want to see from a film perspective on a big man prospect. How does he handle certain situations? This one, he's going to be playing in drop coverage. And this is toward the baseline, toward the sideline here. Sar now in drop, okay? I think right now, positionally, doing decently. I would have probably nudged him over a little bit toward his left hand, toward the ball handler's right hand, just so he's a little bit more downhill linear with the ball handler. Although right here, one thing he's doing really well, he understands that he's got backside tag help from the player defending both the wing and from the corner. So right now he's splitting the difference between the ball handler and the roller. So I like where he's at positionally right now. And the one thing I really love is that he's got his arms up. This is something that's very difficult for 18, 19 year old kids to remember. You have seven and a half foot long wingspan almost. Use it. Keep your arms up in the air, be as big as possible. Sar, who is extremely fluid, extremely mobile, he's doing a great job here with his positioning and also his arm usage. Just by having them up in the air, it erases a passing lane, just makes the guard's life a little bit more challenging. And at this spot, there is a critique in here for me, but he erases the shot here. Let's get to exactly where I wanna be. At this spot here, with Bryce Cotton being a little late on the chase, he's a little bit behind. Saar probably needed to play an extra step over, especially given where the tag defenders are at this point. Saar probably could have been a little bit more responsible for the driver of the basketball. Was not here, luckily, long enough, athletic enough to make a play. But at this spot right here, this is where you should probably be realizing like, hey, Cotton's not in this play really anymore. I have to be able to slide over and take the big man. This happens all the time in the NBA. Typically, this is how a lot of big man rollers score, is the guard gets downhill first and kind of puts the defending big man in a bind of, okay, I have to rotate over, and that's where lob dunks are usually created. But in this situation, Sar luckily is able to make a play, although I would have liked him to be slid over a little bit more. So from a positional technique standpoint, maybe not the best positioning in the NBA. This might just end up being a finish. But again, we're looking at the tools that Sar has, the length, the shot block timing, all of those are extremely impressive. And I think as the technique comes, as he matures and develops and grows as a prospect, especially with his IQ and, and on-court positioning, this is something that there's a lot of functionality here in the way that he's played, uh, playing in pro basketball right now, and the way that he's going to be able to adjust to the NBA level with good coaching. And I think that's you know, a great example here of, hey, there's room for him to improve yet in some of these areas, but he's got the tools, he's got the ability, it's just about maximizing him as a prospect. This is really where I think he's going to thrive the most in the NBA as a help side shot blocker. He is going to deny a ton of shots in the NBA exactly this way. And one thing that this doesn't get talked about enough, but Really a lot of good NBA defense comes from the initial point of attack defender being able to stay attached. In this case, Sar's teammate for the Perth Wildcats does a great job staying attached to his matchup while driving downhill. Sar then 
with the offensive player not really being able to extend toward the rim, they're not able to get as much lift because there's a defender draped all over them. Sar's job is quite easy. Just go up there, clean up the mess. It's exactly what he does. And I think the more of that, if he gets into the right situation in the NBA with good perimeter defenders, lengthy perimeter defenders, sticky perimeter defenders, you're going to see Alex Sar become a big time shot blocker in the NBA. Although, look, this isn't the characteristic of an anchor right here. This isn't anchoring a defense getting this type of block. But it is still a good thing. You want to be able to block shots. It definitely adds a little bit of a rim protection element as players go into the rim uh, toward the rim when they attack the basket they're wondering okay where is Alex R at is he gonna block my shot and even that second of doubt is all you really want from a big man completely changes the complexion of how offenses attack this one's another really impressive hip flip block here from Alex R and this is where the fluidity and the literal hip fluidity specifically just stands out to me as uh, an opposing player attacks downhill. You see Saar here playing in between two. And this is where he's, again, utilizing his length. He's got his arm up. He's trying to make himself as big as possible to slow this down. Now, the ball fake gets him, okay? This is an incredible ball fake from the ball handler. Saar gets completely turned around. But with shot block timing, <laughs> length, and athleticism, he is still somehow to get able to get his hands on this basketball and he just brings it to the backboard and then comes down with it himself. This is, again, a very impressive clip, in my opinion, of Alex R on the defensive end of the floor. As you can see, I'm a big believer in when he's going to be as both a shot blocker as a pick and roll defender. I think that with the clip we showed earlier, which I want to go back to again here, his woe play. This is incredible stuff. I think he's going to be switchy in space. I think he's going to be able to really run a variety of pick and roll coverages. If you want him to hard hedge and recover, if you want him to soft hedge, if you want him to blitz, I think he's going to be very capable of doing that, especially with his length and size. I think it's going to be an intimidating uh, player to pass over. If you're blitzing with him, um, I think you're going to be able to switch at times, which you know you never really want to do a ton of, but I think that is still something that with the functionality of his athleticism you're going to be able to get away with on from time and time again which is a good thing you all you want to have as much flexibility as possible and I think as he improves with his IQ and on-court positioning with good NBA coaching I think you're going to get a player who can not only play in those other forms of pick and roll coverage but he can also play in drop and deep drop and I think with that you're looking at just a really intriguing prospect who's going to be able to do a ton of different things for you. Another thing that stands out to me about Alex Saar, despite being a potential number one pick, there's no question about his motor for me. I think he wants to win. I think he really values high effort plays. Look at the multiple efforts he makes on this play. Fighting for the rebound at first, he gets in there, gets a block shot, and then recovers the loose ball as well. Outlets it to Bryce Cotton. This is exactly what you want to see from a potential top pick, someone who is also a workhorse. Works their tail off, they want to help their team win. And listen, when you're playing pro basketball, especially for a team like the Perth Wildcats, who historically have been a good NBL team, especially in recent memory, you're looking at a player who he's wanted to fit into the culture there. He's been a player who isn't outstandish and doesn't really fit into a team identity or a team construct. I think Alex R is going to be a super smooth transition into the NBA from a locker room perspective. I think you're looking at a player here who has all the length, size, physical skills that you want in a potential drop, top draft pick. Uh, maybe not the number one pick in the 2024 draft. That's likely what he maybe is. We'll talk about my projection later. Sar here doing more of what he does. Nice block here on a post up, but this is where the transition play stands out to me. And this is something we have to talk about with Alex Sar as a transition basketball player. Not only is he going to generate a lot of transition opportunities by blocking shots and enforcing turnovers, but he's also capable and comfortable pushing the ball in transition and working downhill as a ball handler. And I think this is going to paint some more of his upside when we're talking about what he is currently doing and what he's currently capable of as a playmaker and as a downhill attacker. Specifically, looking at him here, a couple of dribbles now. He doesn't have a super tight handle. You're not going to use him as a high volume isolation player. He's probably not going to handle in the pick and roll much at all, if any. But you're looking at a player who has shown flashes of being able to handle the basketball in bursts. And I think that's going to be a huge thing for his development. 
and his ability to play in transition both as a play starter, play initiator, and a play finisher, all of those things are going to be huge for whatever team ends up drafting him in the NBA. In this example here, he's the play initiator, creates for his teammate, gets an easy transition layup. But the next example here, not only does he start transitioning again with a timely steal, but this time he's the play finisher with an above the rim lob jam in transition. It gets the fans riled up, but he starts this whole play here in the pick and roll. Nice little blitz here on the basketball, forces the ball loose with active hands. And again, the ability with his size length and downhill fluidity, he's very mobile with his size. And that's one of the more impressive things. This isn't like a Zach Eady super tall player where it takes him a while to roll and he doesn't really move downhill very well. Alex R has all the downhill traits that you're looking for from a physical standpoint. When we're talking about the physical tools, he's quick, athletic, vertically explosive, somebody who's going to throw down a ton of dunks in his NBA career, and a player who projects to be really, really darn good pretty quickly into his career. I still think, yes, there's gonna be a learning curve with him, just improving, getting used to the NBA game. Obviously having some pro experience is gonna help him, but plays like this make it pretty easy to see why Alex R is a highly touted player. If we're talking about some more of his downhill scoring capabilities, these three plays really stood out to me as pivotal examples of what he's going to either do early in his career or be capable of doing at the NBA level at some point. The first one stands out to me because he gets cut off here on a downhill drive, but with his touch, he's able to step back and hit a mid-range jump shot. The second one, he says, you're backpedaling. I'm Alex Sar, I'm gonna go right through you. And the third one here again, this is where the hip fluidity, he changes direction a couple of times. The ball gets turned over is a phrase that I like to use when you have to, when you're forced to change direction with the basketball, the basketball is getting turned. Alex R is still capable of pushing and transition. This one's just my favorite, just completely bullies the kid. Uh, and I shouldn't say kid, he's a pro, a pro NBL player, uh, but he's just making things happen with the basketball in his hands in transition. I think this is going to become a skill of his at the NBA level. I'm not saying he's going to walk in day one and be this Giannis Antetokounmpo transition like Swiss Army knife doing a bunch of everything, but I think he's going to be a player who's capable of giving you good transition offense, whether you're playing him at the four or five at the NBA level. If you want to look more at some of his downhill driving fluidity, I think this clip's a great example of it here, especially when he catches the basketball. So let's get that paused right here now on the catch. So with his defender over pursuing potentially for a steal, Alex R in one fluid motion. Again, fluid's one of the key words with him when we're talking about him as a draft prospect, has a perfect rip through back to his dominant right hand. And with that, he's able to leverage the slight amount of advantage he has from this moment. As soon as his hips are lateral with his defenders, he's got them beat. And this is a great job here of gathering the basketball. He gathers it early. This is a really nice, strong, elongated finish. I think here he's maximizing his length on the offensive end of the floor. I know typically we talk about length as a defensive tool, and most of the time it is, but looking at offensively too, when you're a long athletic player like Saar, getting to the rim, exploding to the rim in just one to two steps, in one to two dribbles. Look at where he's ripping through here, two dribbles from well beyond the three-point line to get to the rim. It's not the craziest thing, but he's not wasting any motions here. And I think that's an important thing to look at as well when you're evaluating prospects is how efficient are they, not only when it comes to just scoring the ball, what, what, do their, what does their field goal percentage look like, that kind of thing. It also comes down to how efficient are they in their movements. And I think Saar is somebody who, while he's still learning, I think there's a lot of room for him to grow in a lot of areas yet. I think he's rather efficient in his movements, whether that be on the defensive end by flipping his hips or on the offensive end here with, again, a quick rip through, nice explosion to the rim, one, two, and an easy finish at the rack. I also think the playmaking right now is one of the big questions for Alex Saar, and right now he has a negative assist to turnover ratio, but there have been flashes of him really being able to understand what he's capable of doing. This time in transition, whips a nice underhand pass. It's not the craziest pass. This one's really the one that stands out to me. A nice high-low, he gets to two feet, floats it over the defense, uh, actually over Bobby Clintman, another 2024 NBA draft prospect for the layup. And I think when you're looking at 
his ability as a playmaker, it's really raw right now. But the realistic thing here with Sar is you're not drafting him to be a playmaker. You're not drafting him to be someone who's going to consistently create offense for you. If anything, I think you're drafting him for what he brings on defense. And I think his I, the ability to maybe finish some plays on the offensive end and anything you get outside of that is a huge plus. So if you're able to get to two feet here like he does in this clip, make a really nice high touch pass over into Keanu Pinder, these types of plays are just, I would say, extra icing on top of the cake here for Sar. You're not going to rely on him to do this a ton for your offense, but the better and better he gets at this, the better your offense probably becomes because having a freakish, lengthy, athletic player who's capable of putting the ball in the deck a bit, make plays for others. The NBA wants as many of those guys as possible, and I think Sar is someone who he's going to grow in some of those areas for sure. Then let's talk about Saar and his touch, specifically as both a shot maker and a finisher. You've already seen some clips of him finishing around the rim, whether that be through finger rolls or some floaters. I think Saar is an intriguing prospect because at his size, there's not a lot of players who we would deem as shot creators standing at seven foot one or taller in the NBA. But that's really where Saar is probably the most comfortable right now as a scorer of the basketball. So that's very essential. So let's dive into the film here. And one thing he specifically loves is to pull up going to his right hand. Very much like a shooting guard here, right? Now he's not as fluid as a shooting guard in his movements, but he likes the one, two right hand dribble pull up. This is going to be a bread and butter for him. And the nice thing I like about this right now, he's not a perfect three point shooter yet. He's shooting sub 30% from three. So if he's going to encounter teams that are gonna sag him on the three point line, pulling up into some of these one, two dribble pull ups, probably going to be a pretty useful tool for him early, especially as he adjusts to the NBA three point line, a little bit further shots above the break. But the shooting touch is here. Obviously he's shooting extremely well from inside the arc over 60% on the season on two pointers and a decent amount of his shot diet does come on this type of look right here. These dribble pull-ups, these mid-range jump shots, very similar to maybe a Kevin Durant or a Devin Booker, their shot diet. It's not that far off for Alex Sar. Now, he's not the same player as those guys. I'm not trying to suggest he's gonna be the next Kevin Durant or anything crazy, but I'm showcasing that he has touch as a shot maker and he's capable of putting the ball in the deck and he does look rather fluid for his size at taking and making some of these shots. In addition to the dribble pull up, he also loves turnaround jump shots. And he's again, pretty fluid in these as well. So whether you call them spin jumpers or turnarounds, this one's a post fade right here in this clip. He's very comfortable rising up over his right shoulder. Specifically in all of these clips, here's a spin over to his right shoulder. That's a Dirk Nowitzki-esque fade. This one right here over his left shoulder this time, very nice looking jump shot there. He's just pretty smooth in the mid range area. He's got soft touch. You see some of these are hitting the rim, bouncing in. The other one, some of them are just pure. These are nice shots. These are things that I think are going to be functionally available for him at the NBA level because not a lot of big men are accustomed to guarding 15, 20 foot jump shots. You're looking at someone like Joel Embiid who lives in that area. Again, I'm not saying Sar is going to be Joel Embiid, but I think. We've seen the successfulness of a player who is comfortable shooting that area with a very long, big frame. And I think Saar, somebody who, that's the type of shot diet he likes. I think he's gonna be able to create and make shots from that area consistently if a team is wanting him to do that. Now I know the uh, NBA analytics right now do not suggest taking these shots are very good shots. And definitely that is true. But if he's connecting on 50 plus percent of them, which I think he's capable of when he really gets to his peak, then you're looking at a player who is going to be a pretty deadly offensive weapon at times in the right situation. Here's some more of Alex R's touch around the rim, this time in a right post hook. And then again, here's another turnaround jump shot. This one more of a post fade. Again, kind of just showcasing his all around offensive arsenal. He's not this polished offensive scoring juggernaut. He's averaging less than 10 points per game right now in the NBL, but 
per minute, he's scoring a point every other minute. So he's been effective in his time on the court. I think he's been a good contributor for the Wildcats. He's not a next star where you're just putting him out there to give him minutes because they're not earned. I think that everything he's done this year for the Perth Wildcats has been earned. I think he's had a good impact on that team. And I think obviously, you know, it's hard to play with younger guys when you're a pro basketball player. I think Saar is somebody who has earned the respect of his teammates. I think that they trust him. The coach trust him and I think with his ability his skill set and his touch there's good reason to that because he's got a well-rounded skill set and he's able to actually score the basketball and not again not high volume so far but he's been effective and efficient in his touches and minutes and that's really all you want to see from a pro prospect like Saar. Now let's talk about Saar as a pick and roll screener and as a dive man as well. And I think this is what you're really wanting to see from him offensively more and more of. This is similar to what I talked about with Victor Wembanyama during the 2023 NBA draft cycle where, listen, I know he has all of these incredible tools. He's got all of this touch. He's going to be capable of shooting. And we've seen Wemby this year really be awesome as a rookie. Saar, he's not the same player as, uh, as Victor Wembanyama, not even close. I'm not trying to suggest that he is. What I am trying to say is that Saar will be much better off as his shot diet gets closer and closer to the rim. And this is not atypical for any player. Most players across the entire NBA shoot better closer to the basket. And obviously it's because you're closer to the hoop, but specifically when you're seven foot one, the more easy looks you can get close to the rim, the better. And I think Saar, the big thing with him is trying to find opportunities where not only is he exerting rim pressure, but you're feeding him easy lob opportunities, easy dump off passes for dunks. That's going to help his efficiency. It's going to help an offense's efficiency. So even though he's got this you know, nice mid-range game, he's got some of these tools to be a shot creator, you don't want to live solely off of that kind of shot diet. So a play like this is what really makes me smile when I'm evaluating a prospect like this. He dives downhill hard. He aggressively calls for the basketball, wants it to be up in the air. You see him pointing up to the ceiling saying, lob that ball up for me. And if he gets opportunities like this, these are these are dunks 99% of the time, right? This is, if you're talking about NBA caliber players, these plays get finished all of the time. It's a good timely pass. And this is what we need to see from Saar in the NBA level as well, getting easy opportunities, putting backside rim pressure on, sitting in the dunker spot a bit. It's not just about, hey, who has the coolest highlight reel here? We're talking about functionally, how do you build good offense? Rudy Gobert, for a large part of his career, has been a part of good offenses by putting on rim pressure, being an elite screener. And I think that's what we want to see Saar continue to grow in as well in his screen game. Now, something Rudy Gobert doesn't quite do that I think Alex Saar does a very good job of is setting screens and popping. Now, again, the efficiency is not there as a three-point shooter yet, but I think that there's going to be a lot of time for him to develop and grow in this area and become a really good three-point jump shooter. Again, shooting sub 30% from three right now in the NBL and adjusting to the NBA three-point line is probably going to take a little bit of time as well. So you're probably not looking at Sar coming in and shooting 35, 36% from three as a rookie. In fact, I would suggest he probably shoots 25 to 30% from three as a rookie, which isn't bad. I know it's not great, but listen, first year of a, a, a young man's career, if he's taken two or three a game, that's a good thing for his development. The more reps he can get, the better. And I think this is just kind of a, a sign into what he could potentially give an offense. And really when we're talking about what his benefit is as a player, I think one thing that's really nice about Alex Saar is as he continues to grow this area of his game with his mid-range shot making, with his ability to put the ball in the deck and then maybe even shoot some threes, you could get real positional flexibility out of him whether you're playing him as a power forward or a center. And I think he's got some of that tweenerism to him already. When we get to my comparison for him, you're going to exactly see what I mean as a tweener player who's either a four or five, depending on who you ask. And I think with Saar specifically, I think if you're able to play him as a four, it's going to really mitigate some of the concerns about can he be an anchor of a defense, especially early in his career. And it gives him more ability to be a weak side shot blocker, to roll over and, and swat shots and 
also takes some offensive responsibility out from having to be an elite screen setter all the time and doing a lot of the dirty work inside as a rebounder as well. So I think playing at the four early in his career is going to be helpful for him, but also giving him opportunities to play as the five, be the primary screener, be a pick and pop option, be a pick and roll option, be the anchor of the defense for maybe three, four, five, six minute bursts of time. That's going to be good for his development as well. So again, you're looking at a tweener player here, but if he's able to knock down shots like this at the NBA level from behind the NBA three point line, you've got a player who's going to bring a lot of versatility into your offense and your defense, of course, with his positional flexibility. Here's another Alex R. Pop. Again, kind of same spot on the floor. Again, just more of that type of consistency from him. We want to see him knock down these shots. So far, again, the consistency hasn't been there, and I'm kind of skeptical if we're going to see it early in his career. That is completely okay. By the time he's 24, 25 years old, that's really when we need to see it. And I think that we will by that time of his career, because I think with the trajectory he's on now, he's gotten a lot better from where he was two years ago. And I think he's going to continue to get better, especially with NBA coaching. Now let's talk about some of Alex Sar's weaknesses. And I've already sprinkled in a couple. I mentioned earlier, his assist to turnover ratio is not very good. And Obviously, it's not the best measurement of playmaking, but I think that just looking at him, he's still a little uncomfortable playing in traffic and playing uh, with the ball in his hands as a facilitator for others, which is okay. One thing I'm also going to point out too is I think he's a little reliant on touch and finesse right now for a big man prospect. He's got some really nice footwork. This is a beautiful up and under move, and I think Watching Alex Sar this year, the more he has to play in and through contact, the less efficient he is. And that's not just him. There's very few players in the NBA that are really elite in traffic, in contact situations. But when you're talking about upside and potential, that's one of the things you have to factor is how well does this guy play in a crowd? How well does he play through you know, a physical defender riding his hip? How, how does he do when he's met with the chest of a help side rim protector? Those are all challenges that Sar is going to have to overcome. This beautiful up and under, it's a, it's a fancy move. This is what gets put up on social media. It's a great play. This isn't going to work every single possession in an NBA game. And sometimes you have to finish in traffic. So am I confident Alex R is ever going to be a 20 point per game score in the NBA? I'm not exactly confident on that. Now, I think that there's a real possibility he does become that. I know everyone else is gun shy on this 2024 NBA draft class. I think Sar could really blossom as a player at, uh, on the offensive end. I think there's a lot of tools to work with, and maybe if he puts everything together, he becomes a pretty unique offensive player in the league with a pull-up jump shot, maybe a respectable three-pointer, and obviously the length and downhill presence to finish at the rim and finish above traffic and finish above the opposition. I just think playing through that contact, playing into the physicality a bit more is going to be a little bit of a challenge for him early on. And I think the other thing, just looking at his shot diet, we touched on this a bit earlier too, living off of these pull-up mid-range jump shots, probably going to make you not the most efficient player in the world, especially early in his career as he adjusts to the NBA pace, speed. Obviously, he's had a little bit of a head start here playing in the NBL. I think the NBL is a great development league for young players, but I still think Sar, there's going to be a little bit of, you know, kind of learning that he has to do in the NBA and just dealing with different defensive concepts and coverages that are going to probably throw him off his game a little bit. That's okay. Standard for every single rookie in the NBA. So I'm not being overly critical here of Sar, but at seven foot one, again, we don't want every single one of his shots to be a mid range. I think Bam Adebayo is a great example of that this year. He's a heck of a player, Bam is, but sometimes his scoring kind of goes up and down at times, just depending on if he's hitting his mid-range jump shot or not. And if you're a player who's super reliant on touch, you might not get the bounce every single time. So you're looking at, you know, there's going to be a little bit of ebb and flow in his game just because of that, but it's not a huge problem and it's not something that completely scares me away from him and his player prospect profile. So when we talk about where I have him currently on my big board, and I don't have a big board out on the channel yet at the time this video is going to come out, I've been very reluctant to post one because I want to really do my due diligence and wait until after March Madness to even share my first one because I want it to be as accurate as possible and I just want to make minor tweaks along the way down the rest of the year. 
but right now he's probably sitting at number one on my board. That's where I comfortably have him currently. Now it's not locked in there, I'm not committing to that, but I think out of everyone in the draft, if you look at the way that I view basketball through the tiers of the first place player would be an offensive generator for me, someone who I think can be an offensive engine for a team. I'm not exactly sure if one of those exists in this draft class completely, but I think there's a lot of good players. And I think the next tier that I would rank is someone who could be a defensive identity chess piece. And for me, I think that's exactly what Alex R could potentially be given the different uh, ways you could use him, whether that is in the pick and roll as a switch defender, as someone who can hedge at the level of the screen, maybe you can form a high wall and blitz with him. There's a lot of optionality there, just given his profile, the physical tools he has, and assuming his like learning the position comes along with it. You can run him in drop coverage as well. But I also think defensively, when you're talking about just outside of the pick and roll, what else does he do for a team? He's a good shot blocker. I think you can use him as a weak side rim protector. You can use him as a low man. I think you can run zone with him in the middle of the floor. You can run zone with him on one of the corners because he's athletic enough, fluid enough to guard out in space. There's a lot of different ways to employ him. I think you can play him alongside another big man. I think you can play him as the five, although early in his career he might struggle in that kind of regard or just like every other big man does to be honest with you early in their career it's always a little bit of an uphill battle just getting centers accustomed to the NBA and all of the responsibilities but I think Sar is a player who you're going to have that tweenerism there and that leads me exactly into my comparison for him my draft comp uh, as of right now uh, is Jaron Jackson Jr. defensive player of the year and I think that Alex Saar is a player who compares pretty favorably to this year's version of Jaron Jackson Jr. Now it's been a down year for the Memphis Grizzlies and I think this is a great example of how if Alex Saar was your best player, you're probably not a very good team. And the Grizzlies who've had a ton of injuries this year, no John Morant, ended up trading Steven Adams after he missed the entire season. Desmond Bain, nowhere to be seen right now with injuries. So with that, Jaron Jackson Jr. has been overtasked. The team hasn't been very good. But I think Jaron Jackson has displayed very similar scoring prowess. He's got very similar body, super long and athletic. He's fluid out in space, can guard uh, and switch. He's a good chase down to, uh, block defender. And really the weak side shot blocking is what stands out to me. I don't know if Jaron Jackson Jr. is an anchor and I have similar concerns about Alex Saar. Is he going to be an anchor or is he just a really good shot blocker who's a pretty versatile defender? For me, I'm pretty low on Triple J as a center. I think Triple J is best as a power forward next to a strong physical center. That's partially why I was confused when the Grizzlies traded Steven Adams. That's not what this video is about. But I think when we talk about Alex Saar, if he lands in a situation next to a good physical strong five, you're probably going to see him be pretty productive on the defensive end as a playmaker early. But if you see him land as the true center, the true anchor of a defense, the team is probably not going to be very good very quickly. He might just rack up block numbers, but at the same time, he might struggle by getting out of position, failing to rebound. Now, I think he is a better rebounder than Jaron, but at the same time, I'm not sure if the three-point shot's going to come around quite as much as Jaron Jackson Jr.'s has. Jackson's probably a little bit better of an offensive player at this point than Sar projects to be, but I think the comp's pretty similar. I think the physical profile is pretty similar. Sar's a little bit lengthier. I'd say Jaron's a bit stronger, but of course, part of that is being an NBA body. So I think that's my comp for this uh, for this prospect. I think it's an interesting one, an intriguing one for sure. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought about Alex Saar and his game. Let me know who your comparison for him is, and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.